In today's Farm Report, A groups are encouraged by the Progress on TPA, or Trade Promotion Authority, which passed its respective committees last week. Now it goes to the floor in both houses. Trade Promotion Authority would give the president the ability to work on fast-track trade agreements, especially like the TTIP, which is with the European Union, and TPP, or Trans-Pacific Partnership, with 12 Pacific Rim nations. Cindy Zimmerman with AgriPulse has more. Trade Promotion Authority passed the responsible committees on both sides of Congress last week, generating optimism in the agriculture industry that it may soon provide the president with the authority he needs to complete the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. American Farm Bureau Federation trade specialist Dave Salmonson says fast track is critical for agriculture in trade talks. Countries always hold back when it comes to making agricultural concessions or the agricultural deal. And so this is a really hard bargain that takes place at the high level. So other countries have to know when they do make a deal, it is the deal that will stick. It won't be amended or changed and then have to be renegotiated. National Cattlemen's Beef Association President Philip Ellis of Wyoming says his organization is pleased with the progress in Congress. I think this is a great opportunity to take our beef protein, the best protein in the world, to the 96% of the world's population that lives beyond our borders. And Trade Promotion Authority is a way to get this done. It streamlines the process. So I am excited that uh, Congress is moving on this legislation and giving the administration and the USDR, our trade representatives, our good egg negotiators, the opportunity to negotiate deals uh, to expand the, the market for my product, beef. Most agricultural organizations support Trade Promotion Authority, but Reese Langley, vice president of Washington Operations for the National Cotton Council, says they do have some concerns. While the industry is generally supportive of Trade Promotion Authority, there are concerns that extraneous provisions could be added that would be harmful or damaging to the textile industry and therefore could result in the industry having to oppose trade promotion authority. So the industry is working closely with the textile sector and with our allies in the Senate and on the Finance Committee to make sure that these unrelated provisions do not get added to TPA that would be harmful for the textile sector in the U.S. Reporting for AgriPulse, I am Cindy Zimmerman. Things have picked up across the plains, the Midwest, and the South. As of late, USDA meteorologist Brad Ribby says. We now have seen approximately 175 tornadoes so far in April. That's through April 26th, with the most recent round of severe weather along and near the Gulf Coast. So while it's been a relatively quiet start to the severe weather season, let's put things into perspective. That is Significantly more than the tornado activity we've seen in recent Aprils, the three-year average tornado count for the U.S. is 140. But lest we forget, going back to 2011, that was the all-time record-setting 875 tornado April that set records all across the charts for any month of the year. That included the epic April 27, 2011 outbreak that featured 226 tornadoes. That's more than what we've seen in the entire month, which ends... Thursday. For USDA Radio, Susan Carter, Washington, D.C. The renewable fuel standard has been in limbo for the past year, but the EPA has promised to get the numbers out by November for the volume requirements for last year and this year and possibly next year. And the Renewable Fuels Association recently released a poll showing that Americans support the renewable fuel standard. Cindy Zimmerman with AgriPulse has more. A new poll from the Renewable Fuels Association finds that most Americans support the renewable fuel standard. RFA President and CEO Bob Deneen says the poll shows 62% of voters support the RFS, compared to only 18% that oppose it. By a better than three to one margin, people across this country support a program that is going to provide consumer choice at the pump, reduce the pain with gas prices, reduce carbon from motor fuels, and reduce our dependence on imported oil. This program does that, and hopefully EPA is paying attention, not just to what the PR machine at the American Petroleum Institute is saying, but what the American people have said loud and clear. Deneen commented on the EPA's timeline for releasing overdue volume requirements under the RFS. 
Typically, EPA doesn't act until they absolutely have to. So my expectation is that the clock will run until the very last second. But I don't really care when they get it out. I care what it is that they're going to get out. And if on the last day they get out something that closely reflects what they proposed a year and a half ago, then they haven't done anything. Hopefully, they'll not just read the calendar, but they'll read the statute. And hopefully, when they get something out, it'll be something that moves the renewable fuels industry forward. Now, you sort of have to scratch your head as to why it took a court case and a consent decree to get them to come up with a timeline for the 2014 RBO and the 2015 RBO that will be proposed now in June and finalized in November when 2015 is already over. So those two years you have to take as a, um, a lost opportunity and an indication that the administration just couldn't get their act together. What I'll be most interested in is if they fulfill their promise to get out 2016 in the same timeline, because that would be an opportunity to send a signal to the marketplace to drive more renewable fuels than the oil companies want to use on their own. That's what the RFS was all about, and hopefully that's what EPA will do when they finally get around to doing something. Deneen spoke to Farm Broadcasters meeting in Washington, D.C. this week. Reporting for AgriPulse, I'm Cindy Zimmerman. With all the talk about TPA, TPP, TTIP, and all those other trade-related items, we may have forgotten about the World Trade Organization and the Doha Round of Multilateral Trade Negotiations. Now going on for well over a decade, WTO members have set July of this year as their target date to come up with a work program to conclude talks and have a trade deal in place. However, one of the major hang-ups at this point to reach that deadline is progress on farm trade talks. As New Zealand Ambassador John Adank, who chairs the Farm Trade Negotiations, points out, I have to be frank with you. We are a long way from where we should be, given the July deadline. And in key areas, we are as yet far from convergence on certain threshold issues. Including issues such as domestic supports and overall trade distorting support, market access and export competition, especially in the ag import side of the issue. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C.